there and welcome to my channel. This is your first time here. My name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we are going to talk about Lauren Conrad's new beauty line. So far it's only five makeup products and I really love her style but she is one of those celebrities that has launched what they refer to as a clean beauty line. If you followed me, you would know I don't like the whole marketing behind clean beauty, and I wish it's one of those marketing terms that would just go away. It's basically a list of banned ingredients and some sort of pledge to be environmentally friendly. And it's up to brands to define clean beauty for themselves. There is no legal definition, and usually there's no explanation behind these banned ingredients. You just see it on a list of things that they will not include in their products, and so that kind of makes customers take a look at it be like oh well they don't include it there must be a reason should I be avoiding it so that's why we're gonna take a critical look at Lauren Conrad's makeup line what's on her band list what is actually in her products and I wanted to do this to show that with these clean beauty brands especially those who are owned or have a celebrity as the face of and that this marketing is misleading and preys on the fear of customers so first of all we're gonna take a look at the statement when you look at the shop page so it says our collection is vegan, cruelty free, free of paraffins, phthalates, and preservatives. Remember that. And comes in eco-friendly packaging. In other words, clean. So here you see they claim their products are free of preservatives. This is completely untrue. The eyeliner has alcohol, which is ethanol and isopropyl alcohol, both of which do have antimicrobial properties. This is what you'll find in disinfectants and, and hand sanitizers to be timely and relevant. In lipsticks, there's caprylo-glycol, which will help support the preservative system as well. So those I just mentioned, you could skirt around the idea of them being preservatives because they are used for other things. Companies say they're preservative-free and include ingredients like this. It's because they want to say it's preservative-free and that these function as other ingredients when in fact they are used in these to preserve the product. Now the lip tint. They absolutely cannot say this is preservative free. It has phenoxyethanol which only purpose is to be a broad spectrum preservative. The liquid highlighter and the lip gloss also have phenoxyethanol as well as ethyl hexoglycerin which further supports the preservative system. So to say preservative free just isn't true and it's already misleading. I did reach out to the company on, on, Insta, on Instagram via DM. you shouldn't want a preservative free makeup product as it lends itself to microbial contamination and that makes your product unsafe if it has microbial growth. Usually when you see a cosmetic product get recalled, it is due to microbial contamination. Next marketing line from their website. It's simple. We use safe non-toxic ingredients that are good for you and good for the planet. Lauren Conrad Beauty is free of animal ingredients, animal derived ingredients, and never tested on animals. So this is another fear-mongering tactic. To say non-toxic implies every other brand is selling you toxic products. And that is not accurate, and non-toxic is a really low bar to set for your products. And creating products to harm people is bad business. Remember the whole diva curl scandal where people's hair was falling out? They're basically ruined at the moment, and have a lawsuit pending against them. It's not beneficial for these companies to harm people, let alone if a company decided to intentionally harm people. There's a lot of misinformation out there about what's in your products that's actually harmful to you. I have a lot of videos about some of the more controversial ingredients, so feel free to check those out. So let's look at her free from list. There's no explanation from this company of why they are banned. So it's just a list of things that they avoid in their products and which would imply that as a customer, if you care about your health or the environment, whatever they wanna try to spin it as, you should avoid these two. And so this is a long list. I'm gonna break it down into different categories. First, let's remember she only has a makeup line at the moment. We're gonna talk about the banned ingredients that she has on here that wouldn't be in any makeup color cosmetic product anyway. So first banned ingredient they have is AHAs and BHAs. If you love skincare, you will know that these are very popular acids for exfoliating your skin. And now you have Lauren Conrad telling you that they don't use these with no explanation. So what message is that sending? 
it's not healthy, it's not good for the environment. There's no explanation of why and realistically you wouldn't put something like glycolic acid or salicylic acid in makeup realistically. There are some anti-acne makeup products that would use salicylic acid but those are actually regulated as drug products because they do treat acne. So it kind of ruins the credibility of this list to not explain why they don't use this when this is such a popular ingredient recommended by dermatologists for skincare, estheticians in skincare, chemists recommend this, skincare experts recommend this. And it just seems like they put this in here to pad their band list, even though you wouldn't use these in makeup products, which is all she has right now. Also, they allow citric acid and put what they use it for, but they don't list why this alpha hydroxy acid is okay and the other ones aren't okay. You need to differentiate why one is okay but not the other. Not just, oh, we don't use this, but we kind of need it for this, so we're just gonna put it in there. Same thing, they ban retinol. That is an ingredient you would not find in makeup. No company is gonna waste the money to put retinol inside of a product they aren't specifically targeting for skincare purposes. Usually, the retinol is a selling point of the product. Also on this list is chemical sunscreens. She has no sunscreen products. So why would you put you don't have chemical sunscreens? You don't even have mineral or physical sunscreens. So you don't have sunscreen in general. Hydroquinone is used for skin lightening. Again, it's a skincare product. SLS, you don't have any face wash. You don't have shampoo. You don't have body wash. Toluene, you're only gonna see this in nail polishes. Usually it's not even nail polish itself, it's the top coat. Same thing benzophenone, it's gonna, it would only be in nail polish. So unless she's making nail polish, there's no reason to use this. Resourceal is only used in hair dye. She's not making hair dye. And lastly, troclosan and triclocarban, this was used in antibacterial soaps, and so therefore it's already irrelevant to her products that she's producing anyway. But it was also banned by the FDA. Her brand's not special. All they are is complying with the FDA's ruling. But by seeing it on a banned list, it makes it appear like companies are using this, which is not true. So you see how it doesn't make sense to add these to this band list? Maybe she'll make these products in the future, but now it doesn't make any sense to add them to this list. If she makes products that could have this in the future, all it's doing is padding a list of band's ingredients that wouldn't go into your products regardless. For instance, I don't like spicy things. So if someone gave me a cookie and said, oh, don't worry, I didn't put peppers in it. I'm not gonna thank them and applaud them for not putting peppers in my cookie because I would never expect peppers to go in a cookie. Maybe you put them in your cookies, I don't know. I don't know your life. But that doesn't mean that they should be praised for not putting it in there. So now we are gonna get to the ingredient she bans but it doesn't make any sense why she bans them or it's hypocritical in regards to what she does put in her products. First, aluminum powder, and they give the exception, in parentheses, besides colorant purposes. So this is used in things like highlighters and is also a colorant, which they say is acceptable. But why is it acceptable as a colorant and not an added powder to add shimmer to the product? It honestly is probably at similar concentrations so this doesn't make any sense either. Next she bans petrolatum and mineral oil, but in her lipstick there is paraffin, which is also derived from petroleum and which most, this is, these are all derived from oil production, which most people wouldn't consider good for the environment. And this is why I don't take these banned lists too seriously. I can put down a list of ingredients I don't have in my product, but it's far more important to look at what is actually going into the product. So also acrylamide is on the banned list. It has been a cause of concern because it's thought to be a carcinogen most likely occur from when you are cooking. Although it has been shown in studies that all the amount that can occur when you are cooking isn't really a concern, it isn't at levels that would be likely to give you cancer. And it's not something that's really found in cosmetics. I don't like to use the EWG as a source of info. I'll, I can speak more about that in a different video, but you are able to look at the ingredient and see how many products in their database have that in there. And when I search for acrylamide, there's one product that has it in there. For comparison, parabens 
have hundreds of products that contain this ingredient. So it's not really something that people are putting into products anyway. And that's the same with some of the following. Butoxyethanol is listed on Lauren Conrad's band list, but according to the EWG, they have no products in their database that contains this. The same thing with mercury. No one is sitting there adding mercury to their formulas. The last list of ingredients on our band list we're gonna talk about is ones that she doesn't allow in her products, but in her products, she has ingredients that only differ by a little bit to not even have a significant difference and seem to me to have the same health or environmental impact. So she bans all sorts of types of acrylates. These are all gonna be film formers, they're all gonna help it last longer. So ethyl acrylate, ethyl meth acrylate, methyl meth acrylate, butyl meth acrylate, so many. But in her eyeliner, she has styrene's acrylates copolymer, ammonium acrylates copolymer, ammonium styrene slash acrylates copolymer, and no explanation again. They only differ by like one group, acrylic acid versus methacrylic acid. And she bent ethyl acrylate, but allows things like ammonium acrylates to be in there. Really, I think there's very little difference in the groups that she is mentioning, and I couldn't really find more info on why one would be more harmful to the other. They're just all lumped together, really, when they're in the CIR studies, which is the Cosmetic Ingredient Review Board. They do check safety, and everything is very lumped together as if it's all the same. There is not one that really sticks out among this group that's more dangerous than the other from what I can find. And she did the same thing with the styrenes as we already pointed out. And in a similar case, she uses a disodium EDTA, so two sodiums, but doesn't want to use tri or tetrasodium. There's not really a reason I can find to distinguish between these why, in terms of safety, you use one over the other. The only thing is you would choose which one you want to use based on the pH. And again, all this is just based on what I can see from these molecules, what I, from my understanding, there doesn't seem to be a big enough of a difference why you would ban one over the other, other than to just pad your band list to make the list look longer. And if you really wanna look at her products, there's actually a lot of ingredients that people wouldn't like on there. One, for instance, is palm oil, which a lot of people have issue with because people associate that with a lot of destroying of rainforests, taking away habitats to animals. The subject is vastly more complicated than that, but suddenly palm oil is okay with no explanation of why that ingredient is specifically okay. This just goes to show how easy it can be to pick apart these ingredients list. Ammonium hydroxide is also in her eyeliner. It's very volatile, it's very basic, it can burn your skin, which is true, but not if it's at a lower concentration. And keep in mind, these are what allows these band lists put is at any level they don't want it in there, although at the levels that people put them in cosmetics at, they are safe. So you see what I mean? It's really easy for someone to go in and pick apart her ingredients list, even though they might be safe, just as she just did. So this kind of marketing is why I wish this whole clean beauty trend would just stop. There's a lot of brands who identify as clean that I still love, I will still use, and I will still recommend. And I love the efforts a lot of these brands are making, trying to be environmentally friendly, including Lauren Conrad's brand, because she even gives you instructions on how to recycle but the fact that clean beauty is so centered around what is healthy for people if you don't use products that identify as clean you are putting your health at risk and this bums me out because I do like her style these products do look really nice but it's really hard for me to support a brand that's using celebrity leverage to market a product that preys on people's fear of doing what is best for them. So I would love if brands try to focus more on the sustainability aspect of clean beauty and what is going into their products and how it's good for you and how and the environmental impact it has over these ingredient lists that they're just banning arbitrarily to make themselves look like they care about their consumer's health. As opposed to the idea that any other company is trying to harm you with the products that they put out. So I hope as a consumer, you can look past this marketing, have a more critical eye, and having an understanding of 
these band lists and the ingredients that are on them. This is just a marketing tactic based on fear mongering. So if you learned something today, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you can learn more about the science in your makeup and skincare. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye.